Yasas, Herete. My name is Clayton the Roman, and for those of you who haven't watched the channel before, um, I am a former traditionalist Catholic that has since become Eastern Orthodox, more specifically Antiochian Orthodox. And today I'm going to make sort of a a video that is very much uh, on point with a lot of other Orthodox YouTubers, and that's to talk about prayer books. Now, this all comes with one big lesson, and that lesson is maybe don't spend so much of your money on buying a whole bunch of prayer books. That's probably not going to get me any sponsorships anytime soon. But anyway, I think it's worth pointing out that you need probably a prayer book. Or realistically, you might just need this if you talk to your spiritual father. This is a pretty good prayer book. It's what you say your Jesus prayer on, or you could say the Rejoice, O Virgin Theotokos, or as it's called in the West, the Hail Mary. And that'll pretty much do you for most purposes outside of church. But I think that in the West, particularly, we like to have a little bit more literary variety in our prayer. And so we look for different resources and prayer books that uh, are to our liking. That's not to say that lots of pre-written prayers and literary prayers and so forth aren't good. I think they're very good, but maybe not spending so much money on having a whole bunch of them. So uh, when I first started this journey, I was very used to a type of prayer book that's very common in traditionalist circles called a missile, not M I. S-S-I-L-E, but M-I-S-S-A-L, missile, and it contained the liturgy of the Mass, the traditionalist form of the Mass, and in Latin and English, and it also contained all the propers, that's all the changing parts of the Mass. Um, for pretty much every day of the week. I actually had a daily missal uh, from Angelus Press. But in addition to that, it had a, uh, a form for daily morning prayer and daily evening prayer. And it also ha had uh, the materials you might need for Vespers. So pretty much with this book, you could, you could kind of get along with most of what you would encounter in church and most of what you needed for personal, private prayer. So when I started going to Orthodoxy and I encountered liturgies that were in other languages like Old Slavonic or Arabic or um, Greek or whatnot, I started looking for a book that was similar to a Missal that had all my daily prayers in it and also had everything I would need to go to church, regardless of the language that the uh, Divine Liturgy or the other services were offered in. So the first prayer book that I started out with was the uh, good old Jordanville prayer book. Now, I love the Jordanville prayer book. There is a lot to be said for it. 
the language is just beautiful. I mean, we can sort of pick out a short little prayer. It's evening here where I am. So if I get out the prayers before sleep, and maybe uh, the first prayer, the prayer of St. Macarius the Great, right there. You can just hear the, the beauty of the language that the uh, Jordanville prayer book shows to use. And for those who are sort of unfamiliar with this prayer book, this comes from uh, one of the several jurisdictions in the United States called the Russian Orthodox Church outside of Russia. And this is sort of the, um, I would say, the more conservative or traditional form of Russian Orthodoxy in the United States. Um, sort of the other end of the spectrum being the Orthodox Church in the Orthodox Church in America. And uh, you know, sort of in between those two, you have the uh, patriarchal parishes. This is uh, the prayer book that's uh, used by the Russian Orthodox Church outside of Russia, uh, which is made up of a whole lot of uh, people who've converted to Orthodoxy. But anyway, I'll read the first prayer out of this prayer book, the prayer of St. Macarius the Great, which goes like this. O eternal God <clears throat> and King of all creation, who, had, who hast vouchsafed me to arrive at this hour, forgive me the sins that I have committed this day in deed, word, and thought, and cleanse, O Lord, my lowly soul of all impurity of flesh and spirit. And grant me, O Lord, to pass the sleep of this night in peace that rising from my lowly bed I may please thy most holy name all the days of my life, and thwart the enemies fleshly and bodiless that war against me. And deliver me, O Lord, from vain thoughts and evil desires which defile me. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen particularly love the prayers by St. Macarius. And you can hear in the way that uh, Rokor has decided to translate that particular prayer that they've adopted something very similar to what I think uh, Baptists, former Baptists would call King James English. Um, and they've done a very good job of it. So if that's what you're looking for, I think the Jordanville prayer book is a pretty good option. Now, what I quickly discovered was that it was almost impossible to find a prayer book in the Orthodox tradition that had everything, like a, like a, a traditionalist Roman Catholic missal might. Now, the, the Jordanville prayer book has a lot. You know, it's got little bits from Vespers that you might want. Camera a little wipe there. All right. And it has um, the text of the Divine Liturgy. Something I really like about this uh, prayer book is it has uh, various canons. That's your... Uh, that's a devotion that's based on the uh, canon that's recited at Orthros, or uh, Matins, your morning liturgy. So I particularly like that. I would say especially the uh, canon to the guardian angel is a beautiful prayer. But what it doesn't really have is sort of all of the readings that you might have at Divine Liturgy. It had, does have some of the troparia, some of the hymns that are sung at Divine Liturgy. 
So if you kind of know what you're looking for, uh, it can help with that. But, you know, there's a, a bunch of things to keep in mind. One is that, um, you know, all of the uh, variants for the different saints um, are quite extensive in the Orthodox tradition. They can't be sort of reduced down to a, a small number of propers for each service. Um, and there's um, a great variety of what you might hear at a Sunday Divine Liturgy, depending on the saint of the day, depending on the season, depending on the jurisdiction, and even depending on which temple you're in. So to have all of those varieties in one book is almost impossible. Um, that's why the Orthodox... Uh, service books are so numerous and if you sort of get down that rabbit hole of trying to buy all of the service books you might need um, well you're going to spend a lot of money so um, the thing I would say is that the Jordanville prayer book it's not so great it does have so it's not so great for liturgical purposes it does have some very useful um, liturgical texts but in general I would say the best thing about the um, Jordanville prayer book is just the sort of uh, language that's used the beautiful King James English as like a, like I said that Baptists might call it King James English uh, the wonderful devotions to the Theotokos, that is to our Holy Mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and um, and I'd say the daily uh, prayer rule out of uh, Jordanville is a very good spot to start. You'll quickly find out if you can actually do that or not. Uh, it's kind of a longer prayer rule than a lot of uh, prayer books. And um, you might find it discouraging, but it's kind of good, I think, to start here. So you get sort of the full experience. And then if you get discouraged or you find that it doesn't really work with your work schedule or with your family schedule, then you can move on to something else. Now, because I was a traditionalist Catholic and it didn't quite dawn on me that I was looking for something that didn't exist, sort of an all-inclusive prayer book, I went to something a little bigger. And you can see I got this big, thick guy. You can compare it with the Jordanville prayer book, right? It's quite a thicker thing. This is a kind of an unusual book. This is the Old Orthodox Prayer Book. This is the prayer book of those who didn't accept the reform of the Russian Orthodox liturgy in the 17th century. It's got a lot of the same kinds of things that um, Jordanville does. You know, your morning prayers and your evening prayers. But for those of you that want to structure your prayer life around uh, the liturgy, I do have to say that um, the Church of the, I believe it's the Church of the Nativity, if I remember correctly. The Church of the Nativity. Yep, the Russian Orthodox Church of the Nativity of Christ, Old Rite, in Erie, Pennsylvania, has really done quite a good job of translating the um, forms of the liturgy that are used by Old Rite um, Russian Orthodox believers. And uh, they are a little bit different from uh, Rokor's 
liturgical practice or indeed the Antiochian practice, which as you all know is uh, the jurisdiction that I'm in, but they're still wonderful prayers and uh, they do sort of give you the, the basic outline of the various services like first hour, third hour, uh, for my Western rite and Latin rite friends that may be listening, you know, prime, terse, sex, etc. Um, gives you a little bit more of that. It does give you more Tripadia and Kantakia. That's your proper hymns. Um, and I would also say it gives you a lot of the canons. It does have some really beautiful canons. So um, for those of you that want to wade into theological controversy, I do highly suggest you um, you uh, look through all of these canons and see what you think about uh, toll houses of, of uh, or sorry, aerial toll houses, not to start a big firestorm in the comments, but um, if you want to uh, get a little bit of liturgical backing for your respective arguments, this is a pretty good book to start with that. Um, prayers before Holy Communion. And some explanations on why old ritualists do what they do. Um, it's not in the mainstream of orthodox practice. And that's the real downside of this book. And even then, even though it has so many of the uh, propers and so many of the uh, hymns that you might need, it doesn't have everything. Um, and like I said, if you go looking for something that has everything, you're going to be looking for a long time and uh, probably spend way too much money on it. Money that you could spend on uh, supporting your family, giving to the poor, etc. So I'm not showing off these books to be like, see what I have. I'm saying, uh, you know, don't make the mistake that I made. Okay, so my next prayer book, because uh, what is uh, this one? It's a green one. It's, a, it's called a Molotovnik. Prayer book, Molotovnik. And this is the Ukrainian Orthodox Church in the USA. Uh, or sorry, Ukrainian Orthodox Church of the USA. This is a uh, group of uh, canonical Orthodox believers under the Ecumenical Patriarch who are of Ukrainian origin. Um, but no, not the Orthodox Church of Ukraine. This, this group predates um, that sort of split in the church. So this is, comes from a perfectly canonical orthodox jurisdiction. And uh, this prayer book is really wonderful. Um, it, Like I said, it doesn't have everything. It has a lot of your divine liturgy propers for the year. I mean, a, quite a bit. Um, which is nice. So you can sort of study those texts and look up um, your epistle and gospel reading for Sunday, which I think is a great practice. And the prayer rules out of here are very similar to the prayer rule in Jordanville. But interestingly, uh, the Ukrainians uh, decided to use modern English. Not exactly what I would say, you know, conversational English, but rather um, sort of elevated, 
standard modern American English. Um, and I think that's an interesting choice. I mean, it's arguably not as beautiful as the traditional English of the Jordanville prayer book, but it's still, I think, very beautiful and uh, easy flowing. And I keep coming back to this prayer book. Um, I no longer attend a uh, parish in this jurisdiction, but oftentimes when I find that I have a little bit more time in the mornings and in the evenings, and I want to say prayers um, in the sort of the longer Slavic form, rather than in the format of the little pocket prayer book from uh, the Antiochian jurisdiction, I find that I usually pick this one up and instead of the uh, Jordanville prayer book. I do still love the Jordanville prayer book a lot, but this one I find just has a sort of refreshing, crisp character to it. So if you remember, I read um, the first prayer of St. Macarius for the evening, and I'll read you the same thing out of the uh, UOC USA prayer book. Eternal God and King of all creation, you have granted that I may arrive at this hour. Forgive the sins that I have committed today in thought, word, and deed. Lord, cleanse my humble soul from all defilement of flesh and spirit. Grant that I may pass this night in a peaceful slumber, so that, I, so that when I rise from bed, I may please your most holy name all the days of my life and conquer all visible and invisible enemies. Lord, deliver me from vain and frivolous thoughts and from evil desires which defile me. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and, un and to the ages of ages. Amen. So, same prayer, but a, a wonderful sort of free modern English translation. Another interesting thing about this prayer book, um, as you might see from the title page, is that it has uh, the Ukrainian on one side and the English on the other. And I found this useful for a number of things. Um, sometimes, if I can uh, stand to bring a book in to Divine Liturgy, which I don't always do, I uh, will bring this with me if I know I'm going to sort of a Slavic ethnic parish because uh, the Slavic languages are a lot closer together than uh, some of the Romance languages and um, the order of uh, divine liturgy is very similar. So I find that with this book I can follow along pretty easily uh, with those services. So. As far as a daily missile type of book, I mean, it's not daily. This really sort of covers you for most Sundays. Um, but, you know, sort of fulfilling a similar role, this book is pretty good. And uh, it feels great. It has this, I think it's probably a pretty cheap material, but it's kind of got it like a, uh, a, a, uh, uh, thread or a cloth. I think it's a synthetic cloth overboard uh, construction with some sewn with sewn binding, stitched binding. And it also has some beautiful icons. And I'm not too aware of the history of uh, Ukrainian iconography. But the icons in here strike me as sort of very traditional for pretty much anybody. Let's see if I can find a good one. Here's a here's a Saint John the Forerunner, Saint John the Baptist. No, we don't think that he had wings, uh, but the wings symbolize him as a messenger of God. Because, of course, we know that the word angel, angelos, in Greek, means messenger. And so, St. John the Baptist was the messenger of uh, 
Jesus Christ. And so he gets wings, like other angeli. So, anyway, uh, really beautiful little icons in there. Uh, you have the Divine Liturgy. You have the um, uh, Daily and Sunday hymns. You have a lot of the um, common, what are called the common hymns from the general Manaeum. That's sort of like, these are all the hymns you would sing for a hierarch. These are the hymns you would sing for an apostle. So it has a lot of those in here. So it comes about as close as you can to a daily missal. Uh, for those of you who are used to that sort of thing. Also, I like this. It has a small catechism in the back. So, you know, you can kind of sense the borderland nature of Ukraine in its approach to religious education. Maybe they're picking up a little bit from Western uh, uh, catechetical practices, uh, but nonetheless very useful. They have a wonderful little summary of the faith. And if that weren't enough, there are some little religious songs in the back. I, I have attempted to find the tunes to these songs. I, I suspect that um, you just kind of have to know them. Um, but nonetheless, they're fun to uh, to read and to reflect on. They pretty much go for a lot of the major feasts and a whole lot for Christmas because uh, Ukrainians love their Christmas carols. So, um, beautiful prayer book uh, from the USC USA. Um, I mean... The one thing I would say is that the translation for this book is sort of sui generis. You're not going to hear it that much in churches that are not UOC USA. Um, so if you're attending a an Antiochian parish um, and you get used to saying the prayers in this translation, you might have a little confusion there. So that's one downside. Um, obviously, the sort of controversial nature of uh, the Ukrainian church these days, that might be another downside. So uh, nonetheless, this comes from a canonical jurisdiction, certainly. And uh, it is a beautiful prayer book beautiful translation uh, into modern English. It takes a lot for me to say that. I'm usually a very stolid traditionalist in, in terms of, of uh, translations, but I'll say that if I were translating something into modern English, this is how I would do it, but probably not this good. Uh, so, really great book. Okay. So, this pretty much suited me. Uh, as long as I was going to a USC USA parish, this was all I needed. I'm just going to say that right out. If you're going to a USC USA parish, like you should pick up this book and this should be, um, this should be by in your icon corner and by your bed stand. And this is pretty much all you need for anything always. Um, but I was very used to reciting uh, more of the liturgical cycle than maybe what a lot of Orthodox are. I was a, um, a Benedictine oblate. For those of you in the uh, East who don't know what that is, a Benedictine oblate is someone who tries to model their life on the... Uh, book of, uh, on the uh, rule of St. Benedict, uh, which prescribes a 
fairly extensive office. And so something I looked for was something that would have as many of the offices. So prime, terse, sex, known, vespers, etc. Or as they're usually called in the East, first hour, third hour, sixth hour, ninth hour. Not that it makes all that much difference, by the way, because of course, first hour translates into Latin as ad primam oram, which is prime. So, you know, it's just a Latin translation of the same thing. So I went out and I bought this book. This is the Anthologian from St. Ignatius Orthodox Press. Now, many people have talked about how much they love this book because it's got pretty much everything you need to say uh, everything except Divine Liturgy as a reader service at home. Except, here's the problem. The translation is, I'm given to understand, fairly common over in the UK, but not over here. And it's kind of off-putting. So we're used to saying Theotokos, or, you know, if you go back to uh, the Ukrainian prayer book, Birth Giver of God, this sort of very literal practice uh, to preserve all the sort of theological content of Theotokos uh, in American translations. But the, the um, Anthologian chooses to translate Theotokos as just Mother of God, which is not a terrible translation for Theotokos, but it does strike me as a little bit odd for an American audience. And the translations of other prayers in here are just sort of equally weird. Um, I mean, I'm not going to belabor the point. The translations are different. They're not all that inaccurate, but they might be off-putting if you're used to a different practice. And they don't really, it's not a really all that useful of a book if you're going to services at a church, unless it's in a foreign language, of course, then you might find this a very useful book. However, I would say something else about the Anthologian, and that is that despite having a lot of what you need to say each of the services, as the size of the book might suggest, um, it doesn't really have everything. So it doesn't have the canons for uh, daily services. There is, uh, for those of you who are not as familiar with the Eastern Rite, there's a canon that's recited at Orthros. Um, traditionally speaking, this doesn't have that. It doesn't even have sort of guidelines for how to skip it. It instead comes up with its own sort of novelty as to how you can leave that canon out. Um, it also leaves out the Stavro Theotokia. That's, that's your uh, 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 hymns to the Theotokos. Uh, on certain penitential days that focus on her relation to the cross. It doesn't have um, it doesn't have all of the triodia, uh, the, all of the uh, necessarily necessary material for a Lent, for um, the Paschal season. So it's actually missing quite a bit. I mean, it, it's kind of good enough, I suppose, if you were traveling and you were a priest and you wanted to make sure you recited um, as much of the services as you could, but um, it's not complete in the same sense that a breviary isn't. And you're going to need a whole lot of other books. You're going to need at least a Bible, if not a prophetologian or a uh, an epistle book and a gospel book. Um, and you're going to need a copy of the book of Psalms 
if you're going to recite the portion of the Psalter pointed for each day, so you might want to go to the same press and pick up the Psalter. And by the way, I really recommend their edition of the Psalter. Again, it's not a translation that's used in church all that much, which is kind of a theme for St. Ignatius Orthodox for us. Uh, but as far as a private uh, Psalter to just sort of read and reflect on, boy, it's beautiful. So um, the Anthologian really doesn't fit the bill either as far as a um, prayer book that contains everything that um, you might run into in a Catholic or uh, Western Rite uh, prayer book that could sort of contain more, more of the liturgy in one volume. Um, but that's, you know, that's because of how rich and how uh, literary, literarily diverse, I think that's a word, literarily, mm. how theologically rich, let's use that, um, how theologically rich uh, the texts are uh, behind uh, the Orthodox Divine Liturgy, uh, the services, especially I would say Orthros. Um, you know, it's it's impossible to contain that all in one volume. I have wondered in, you know, sort of privately whether it'd be possible to sort of split all the books up and get them into single volumes for, say, each month or for quarters of the year, um, and whether it'd be possible to do something like that, uh, something very similar to those old four-volume breviaries that uh, were once very common in uh, traditionalist Catholicism. Um, but I'm not entirely sure that it's a practical project to undertake, because Realistically, um, Orthodox prayer is more meant to be in common. Something that we share with other people, not something that we sort of pull up in our icon corners and perform on our own. And I think that if we do that, we risk a whole lot of spiritual pride. And we also risk our pocketbooks, which is sort of the theme of this video. Uh, don't spend too much money on prayer books. Don't uh, pull a Clayton the Roman and find yourself with a whole shelf of prayer books, um, and uh, most of which uh, you don't use. So instead of that, here's my suggestion. Um, I would say get one Uno longer prayer book that has a lot of different devotions in it for different circumstances. That might be Molotovnik from the UOC USA, or a little bit more practically, it might be the Jordanville Prayer Book. I would say make sure that you have a Bible and a good liturgical Orthodox Psalter and if you're wanting advice on which one of those to get, I would say it doesn't have to be this edition. It could be the little green pocket edition. But the Psalter According to the Seventy by uh, Holy Transfiguration Monastery or the Jordanville Psalter for Prayer, if you're wanting to stick with Rokor. Um, and then whatever prayer book uh, is recommended by your jurisdiction. So... The Antiochian Pocket Prayer Book, I love that. It's a great prayer book. It uses beautiful language. Um, you know, uh, OCA, there's, I believe that's called Orthodox Christian Prayer. It's a very good prayer book. Um, I do think the Serbians have a little pocket prayer book as well. Um, I think most of the jurisdictions have um, a sort of uh, everyday carry prayer book that they 
uh, target to their uh, congregations. So I think I would get that. And those two things, if you have a longer prayer book, it has a lot of different devotions. You have a shorter prayer book that you might actually use more often. Um, you're pretty good. And, uh, you know, make sure you have a Bible and uh, a Psalter. That's probably about what you need. Um, I would say if you get a Bible, do make sure it's, um, you know, a pretty good uh, translation for Orthodox purposes. Um, what would that be? I'd, I'd say the King James Version, uh, the Revised Standard Version, a little more controversial, but uh, the Revised Standard Version uh, Catholic Edition, I know that's even probably more controversial, but um, the Revised Standard Version Catholic Edition does have a few less of the liberalisms that you see in the Revised Standard Version. But uh, to be clear, the Revised Standard Version was the first uh, Bible that I know of that was approved by the Orthodox Church uh, in the United States. So that's a good one. Uh, the ESV with Apocrypha, uh, that's a very good prayer book, uh, or a very good Bible. The Orthodox Study Bible, pretty good, but I will say that translation of the Old Testament is um, a little bit lacking in its uh, faithfulness to the Septuagint. To the Septuagint, however you want to say that, um, certainly be Septuaginta, Septuaginta in uh, Latin. Um, so, you know, it's pretty good. And of course, the commentary will mostly keep you in bounds uh, in reading the Bible as an Orthodox Christian. Uh, but I would say there are some exceptions to that. I was reading. Uh, the pa some a passage the other day where I thought, hmm, I think maybe they're being a bit too uh, uh, free-flowing on their Orthodox commentary. But anyway, uh, I would also say the Orthodox uh, Study Bible is a pretty good introductory prayer book. So it has a little, it has a couple of rules for prayer in the back. It has a lectionary, so that's a pretty good uh, starting point. But I would say still look to your jurisdiction as a guide for uh, what actual readings to to, uh, to choose for each day. And uh, keep an eye on your calendar so that you don't read one thing at home thinking that this is going to be the Sunday readings. And then you get there and you realize, oh, my jurisdiction uses a different calendar than the one that's used in the Orthodox Study Bible. So... Um, it has a lot of limitations, but it's a very useful resource. So, moral of the story, don't be like me, save your pocketbook, give some money to the poor, uh, perform good works, buy candles, support your church, don't spend all your money on prayer books, and um, above all, don't rely on what you can buy to increase your faith. This is something I have to fight with all the time. I always want to buy more theological books. I always want to buy a new prayer book or a new gospel or a new, not a new gospel, but a new book of the gospels or a new New Testament or something like that. But don't be like me. Don't let the addiction take hold. Instead, use your money for better things. If you have too many books, sell them. Give them away. Give them to people who don't have prayer books. Um, even a prayer book that you don't use will be extremely useful to someone who has no prayer book. And maybe who can't stand to waste the money that you did buying something that you're not going to use. So, you know, things to think about. Um, and, uh, above all, um, I would say turn to God 
with all your heart in constant and uh, daily prayer. And please pray for me that I have the strength to do, to do the same. Thank you all. Have a good night. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Thank you all. Echarasot.